I did my master's from UK from Goldsmiths College. My master's was in documentary film production. And uh, I also did a certificate course, professional course from European Media School in UK. That was on, uh, both were on achieving scholarship in a way. Okay. And uh, then I went to Oklahoma State University on my Fulbright scholarship. And I studied film research at Oklahoma State. I did my PhD from University of the Punjab and my PhD research topic was visual pleasure in Pakistani cinema. So you can say that precisely focused on images of women in the cinema and how images of women are used for pleasure. So most of my research that I did before doing my PhD was on international films, quite a few on films on war issues or war films. After my PhD, I have done a lot of work on uh, gender issues in Pakistani film. You will find, I think, two, three readings on this page. So have you looked at what is posted on this page? Yes. All right. Um, do you realize? OK. Um, I would try sharing you, sharing with you what I have posted here in terms of uh, course breakdown or grading criteria. OK. Or course criteria. Can you see this sheet? Yes, ma'am. It says assignments 25%. All right. And it also says research papers 50% at the bottom of the page. Yes. So most of work, most of your work will be assignment based, including your mid and final papers. So we can say that the, the research papers that it says here will include uh, midterm research paper and final research paper. So each of them will be, uh, the two will be marked for 50%. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. So 75% for written work which will be paper-based. It says presentation 10%. So please make sure you do not miss class presentations because if you miss it, you lose 10% marks. It also says peer review 5%. Are you familiar with it? No, ma'am. Okay. Peer review is reviewing work of your fellow student. So in one of the last classes towards the end of the course, which will be, I would say, which will be around 26th of August, please make sure you do not miss the class on that day because I will ask you to review final exam of your fellow student in that class, which means you will not be reviewing the final draft. You will be reviewing and you will be reviewing first or second draft of your fellow student as the student will be asked to share his or her work with you you will review in class okay so peer review will be marked for five percent class participation it says ten percent and i think i have completed how will be marking uh, coursework here okay any questions so far in in one of my courses last semester i had my i had uh, dedicated 20 percent marks to presentation this time i only assigned 10 percent so please make sure you're not missing any of these uh, the assignments two assignments 
it says 25 percent it means give one assignment will be for 15 marks and the other might be for 10 marks depending on how much time uh, we have depending on how much how we are dealing with the assignments so sometimes i do ask my students to convert their assignment into an exam so make sure that you share your assignment with me in time and you do not miss the assignment because if you miss the assignment it will be difficult for you to change your assignment into your mid or final exam or um, it normally helps if you do the assignment on time you can submit a better mid or final exam okay Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. All right. So somebody shared a link here. Miss, that was me. I just added you to the WhatsApp group. Okay. WhatsApp group. Um, I'll try joining it. No, you're already in the group. Okay, I am already in the group. Great. So you created as an admin. Okay, so you created created the group. Group's name is Women in Media. Yes. Uh, all right. So, all right. Women in media is sufficient. If you like, you can also add Summer okay. to the name. Because I think I am also part of some women in media group, which happens to be uh, spring class. So if you add Summer, it will be simpler. Okay. Done. All right. Okay, so everybody is clear about the uh, the grading criteria or class criteria. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's look at the page. All right. It says. Uh, representation please ignore the dates besides um, different uh, different classes because these are dates from spring I'll be changing changing these I'll be removing the dates from here I have removed from the other class somehow I think I missed this one so it says representations in Pakistani film that is about representations of women in Pakistani film um, and second one says sexualized objects and honor okay let's see what is here you would realize that these are actually going in order what I would do I would post add dates here today okay so you have see material is already posted here so this one this one is an encyclopedia entry can you read the title it says encyclopedia of women and Islamic cultures and it talks about representations of women in Pakistani film the earlier part of the article is just telling you something about the Pakistan film industry uh, encyclopedia entries are like this you need an introduction to the film industry before you start talking about representations right if it was a journal entry, which means a research paper published in a journal, it would start differently. It will directly start from representations of women in Pakistani films. I believe those from DLA and uh, uh, psychology department understand what I'm saying is the difference between encyclopedia entries and journal entries. Are yes. You, okay. So because encyclopedia is for general, general uh, for public at large so it it is it starts with the introduction and general entries focus more on uh, on the topic which is cinema representations in commercial films pakistan all right uh, we'll uh, we'll come back to it 
it's the article is posted here because sometimes students cannot access them directly uh, the second says the second topic says sexualized objects right so this is there are three papers um, posted under this link this is uh, the third one actually focuses on the topic so please don't get confused by looking at the first one this is the research paper by Sadaf Ahmed the title is sexualized objects and the embodiment of honor rape in Pakistani films um, did TFT student say she is from semester 5 I think she can't hear me right now. All right. So, uh, Sada Ahmed actually selected about 35, 36 Pakistani films. And all those films were super hit films. So, she looked at how the films represented rape or attempt to rape. So you can understand that she is only looking at rape or attempt to rape in rape in Pakistani film, and then she wrote this article. We will discuss this article as well. Okay. Any question? So far. No, ma'am. Okay. So first three articles here are on Pakistani film. The third one says censorship of visual pleasure and I said this was my PhD research topic so and um, uh, visual pleasure is a topic that actually Laura Mulvey uh, worked on and uh, she wrote this article on visual pleasure in narrative film you can see it here this is the first article posted here Visual Player and Narrative Cinema. Laura Mulvey wrote this article back in 1977. Um, she is from UK and uh, she was very familiar with the French film and also Hollywood films. But this article is primarily focusing on images of women in Hollywood cinema, right? So Malve felt that films, uh, if you read here, it, uh, she, she felt that uh, films focus on female fascination. And Hollywood film in particular uses pre-existing pattern of female fascination. And that's how she felt uh, Hollywood films uh, attract male audience and male audience in black and white you know like in um, is, uh, in the darkness of the theater focuses on film so she was focusing on primarily on male audience and hollywood film and her focus was like how how cinema creates one to one relationship between male audience and the screen right so does everyone understand what one-to-one -one relationship mean mm -hmm. no um, ma'am does it describe basically the role of how the director and the film he is creating influences the audience on an individual level like how you are supposed to engage with it yes it is about individual level and how viewer engages with the film but one-to-one -one relationship means that when you're watching film in the theater or in cinema, it's dark. And you are not familiar with people sitting next to you, right? In cinema, you are not supposed to know people who are sitting either on your left or right side. Of course, you can go there with your family or friends. But in the darkness of the theater, relationship is one-to-one -one because you are not talking with each other when you are in cinema. If you're watching TV at home, you can talk to, the, to everyone who is sitting in the living room while watching TV, right? So 
<clears throat> so is is the concept clear now yes so it's basically like a relationship between the screen and the structure of the cinema right uh, exactly and also uh, primarily about the relationship between the viewer and the screen mm -hmm. okay so yes. malve is focusing on primary relationship she uh, most of the communication uh, theories do say that in cinema you have primary relationship with the screen because you are not doing anything else so there are, there can be three types of uh, relationship which means uh, primary relationship secondary relationship or tertiary relationship with the screen okay so primary relationship is about one to one relationship and that is normally in cinema because in the darkness of the theater you are doing nothing else except looking at the screen okay when you are watching tv at home you may also be looking at your uh, cell phone you may be talking to people around you and watching uh, the tv play or film as well so that is called secondary relationship because you may be doing other things your attention may be divided okay so that is called secondary relationship any idea what is tertiary relationship with the screen tertiary relationship means that tv may be playing in the background and you may be in the room or in the kitchen which means relationship with the screen is even lesser especially when people are alone at the house they may leave tv on and be and they can be doing other things so tertiary relationship is even weaker right so it means people are doing more work they are hardly attentive to tv screen it's just playing in the background it's on you're not watching it or you are grasping things occasionally so is is it clear what primary secondary or tertiary relationship with the screen mean yes yes okay so malve actually meant that uh, hollywood creates film for the pleasure of male audience and hollywood does not particularly create films for female audience so she meant that uh, films create uh, re reproduce or reinforce images Uh, which patriarchy has created okay so visual pleasure and narrative cinema actually means uh, recreation of or reinforcement of uh, pre-existing patterns of female fascination if women behave this way they are good women if women behave that way they are bad women and cinema of most countries uh, sticks to the cultures and reinforces pre-existing pattern of female fascination okay so i said the first article here is by laura malve she originally wrote this article back in 1977 and then she revisited her own article uh, at the start of the millennium and she wrote two more articles uh, visual pleasure on visual pleasure which which are revisiting visual pleasure so it means uh, the authors sometimes go back to their own articles malve went back to her own article about 30 years later and she what she wrote, she wrote 30 years later was no different from what she had written earlier rather she was writing more on how visual pleasure is reinforced in today's world okay so there is an here is interview of laura malve if you like you can read it too uh, we uh, i would hardly have time to go through this interview because uh, the topic emphasizes on gaze in films which means that when viewers are watching films in cinema they are gazing on the screen and cinema screen captures the gaze especially of male audience this is another article which says visual pleasure in pakistani cinema 
right? So um, I wrote this article because I felt uh, that visual pleasure in Western world might be different from visual pleasure in the East, right? So this article was uh, focusing on visual pleasure in Pakistani films because I felt that culture is different in Pakistan when it comes to gazing and when it comes to male-female relationship or even relationship with the screen, viewers' relationship with the screen, okay? Any comment? No? Uh, Ma'am, like, um, I wanted to ask you exactly how or why are these different uh, sta uh, stages or ways of, um, of relationship are relevant or important for the viewer? Uh, viewer would hardly know about these things. Uh, we being theories, uh, we being theorists, you know, or communication uh, experts or students or scholars, we try to understand the viewer's relationship with the screen. Uh, viewers, when they are watching uh, film in cinema or when they are watching the uh, program on television or a drama on TV, they hardly know that they have a primary relationship or secondary relationship or tertiary relationship with the screen. Uh, these these are terminologies that you can say experts have created or people who are from academia because they look at things differently. They try to understand what are the effects of television or cinema on the viewer. So these, um, these are important uh, for studying the effects or when we were looking at Laura Marway's article, she does not mention effects. She calls it psychoanalysis. You see mm -hmm. the psychoanalysis, the political use of psychoanalysis. Uh, she has divided her article into different uh, segments. And then she starts talking about uh, castration anxiety in this article. Uh, I believe at least psychology students would be familiar with the word castration anxiety. Yes, ma'am. Right? So yes. I, I, would, I would explain it to other students. Um, it would help if you know about it earlier, but it's not a very difficult concept. It's a simple concept. Uh, go, though I think that um, it's a complicated and difficult article, right? So uh, viewers actually hardly know about these things. Uh, these are the things for, you know, these are educated uh, uh, concepts. So uh, you can say that uh, scholars actually understand what it means. So for, for developing scholarship or developing argument on these concepts, it's important uh, to create concepts and then scholars debate on concepts among them and further develop the concepts. So you can actually agree or disagree with the concepts that we read in the articles. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So any other, any other question so far? No? All right. So after visual pleasure, so this article I said focuses on visual pleasure in Pakistani cinema because I felt our culture is different. So I wanted to see how women uh, are seen on Pakistani screen. And this uh, divides uh, Pakistani cinema into two eras, which are pre and post uh, 1979, which means before Bhutto, uh, before Zia and after Zia. Uh, Zia came in 1977, but this article starts, uh, has a date which is before and after 1979 because Zia issued a uh, motion picture ordinance in 1979. So we are, we, this article actually discusses how films were treating uh, women before uh, the motion picture ordinance was issued and after the motion picture ordinance was issued because it's uh, primarily about censorship of female images, women's images on the screen. Okay.
all right so next article here says mommy's matriarchs and other controlling images so you can see this article is published in this book i have posted the book because i did find the article online but i thought article had some problems uh errors were up and down so best was to read the articles from the book uh, okay so let's try finding the article it says mommy's matriarchs and other controlling images this is chapter 4 on this page can you see it here chapter 4 mommy's matriarchs and other controlling images okay uh, this article focuses on images of african women on screen primarily in the us or how white people uh, call some african women mommies and some african women matriarchs and they have control created other controlling images for them when you read it you will realize that some african women are called breeders some are called welfare moms and some are called jezebel or hookers so this actually focuses on what kind of controlling images are created for women living in us or in western world black women in the west okay so this actually focuses on images of women african women in white content mostly hollywood content or uh, content on the american screens okay uh, then this article says orientalism and gender i believe dla students may be familiar with this word orientalism mm, yes ma'am yes, okay uh, do psychology students know what it means yes uh, yes some of us i think okay all right so this is about the women or people from the arab world or from not just arab also uh, the subcontinent some african countries in this part of the world in in fact 22 countries are included in the list of oriental countries or oriental world so this actually focuses on uh, what kind of images of orient were created over 200 years in the past so edward said actually thought uh, these uh that west had created and repeated images of uh, oriental people you can see that i have posted a number of video clips here right these are short clips and this last one is actually said's interview okay i, I will not play it right now we will specifically read it at a particular time and we will watch this um, interview of said as well this is about 40 minutes long and this is on youtube so you can just click the link here and go to youtube and watch it okay I think you can't hear it but you can see the images. All right so this uh, we will be viewing this uh, interview of Edward Said and we will be looking at other clips that I have posted here and we will discuss how um orientalism and gender um is created by hollywood films and through art and literature over 200 years right 
you can see there is a link to another article here. This article is by Yasmin Jivani. Uh, she's looking at it, you know, like uh, the article's title is Exotic, Erotic and Dangerous South Asian Woman. Okay, so she's just looking at it, why South Asian women are considered dangerous by the Western <coughs> world. Uh, you'll be surprised because this article actually discusses about Eastern women, what people of the East say about Western women. We feel Western women are sexually independent. This article feels, the author of the article says that Western people feel that women of the East are quite distracting for men of the East and men do not focus on their work and they focus on sexuality and producing children. That's why we have large population in this part of the world. So it's looking at, you know, like how others are seeing us and perhaps saying what we say about them or their women. Next article says, why black skin, white masks? Uh, have you come across this idea before? Um, when does it pertain to how they would act? I read an article once it was a while back on how there was a culture in entertainment in which they would paint entertainment also in slavery where they would paint like um, the african-american individuals in white paint that's what i'm not sure if it's linking to that uh i think uh, you would easily relate to what you have read before when you read this article uh here we are not reading the whole article though i have though i have posted the link to the book right and here is the book black skin white masks you can see author's name his name is france fanan so if you are familiar with france france name it says black skin white masks it actually means that you are black or african outside but inside you are white or you want whiteness? Well, I have um, had a discussion on this book with one of my like, uh, previous teachers. Okay, so that's why I said okay, we are not discussing a book. This is a long book. We are not discussing a chapter either. It says 100, uh, 225 pages. What I have actually done, I have selected um, only three pages from this book, right? Those pages are posted here. So the book actually discusses a novel and the novel title is J. Sui Martinique. Can you see it's written here right on the top of para one. So I selected these three pages that discuss J. Sui Martinique and uh, the author's name is Mayo T. Kapishya. It's written here in the sixth and seventh line, Mayo T. Kapishya. And Franz Fanan is actually discussing Mayo T. Kapishya's desire to have whiteness in her, right? So in these three pages, he is actually focusing on how Mayoti Kapishya looks at herself and how motivated, she is very motivated to get some whiteness. And she tries to be, she is black outside and she wants whiteness inside, okay? So as I said that I have posted three, uh, three pages from the book here, page one, page two, and page three. 
so you can we will only discuss these three pages from this book black skin white masks and discuss the complications in myoti capetia's life and because she has a white husband so she is discussing how she feels with her white husband and why she feels a uh, white husband res res uh, loves her but does not respect her so it is in kind a way of discussing interracial marriages or black and white marriages it would automatically apply to others um the next one is an american family and uh, this is actually a documentary series and you cannot exactly call it a documentary series because it includes it's it's a series on the life of a real family a real american family an american family is the first reality show ever produced in the world all right this reality show uh, included a family of seven which means parents and five children the producers of the producer's name is written here craig gilbert he contacted a family in santa barbara us and he said that we will put cameras all over the house and we will shoot whatever is happening in your life on daily basis they were shooting in their house cameras were fixed all over the house and they were shooting whatever was happening in the life of husband wife and children for 10 months right please turn off your microphones okay thank you so i was saying that craig gilbert signed an agreement with seven family members that he will put cameras all over their house and shoot whatever is happening there in their lives so husband wife and children signed the agreement so that's why i'm saying that it's a documentary because he was documenting what was happening in their lives um Hollywood films or Pakistani cinema or or the Indian normally tries to show good families and if there are bad members the films end at uh something good you know because the overall message of the film is normally not negative right so films normally try to show what society wants or what patriarchy wants they want to show ideal families this uh, documentary series shows that families are not that much ideal because in this documentary husband and wife over a period of time actually divorce each other so this film showed real on air divorce back in 1973 this was the first reality show in the world and this was the first production in the world on gay lesbians because one of their child was gay okay so the uh, lance uh, loud actually became gay icon back in 1970s because of this production and though this was an ordinary family the family members became celebrities because they were on air for quite long it was um, i think uh, weekly show at that time okay and then there is another article it says femme fatale do you know what it means femme fatale actually means fatal woman 
and uh, industrialization in america began in 1920s it brought women into it created working women in large numbers right so as the number of working women increased in post world war eras 1920s actually means after world war 1 okay so it means a lot of women started working outside world war had sent men to war it means women were in were head of the family in the absence of wars right so i believe all of you know world war world war 1 was from do you know the dates of world war 1 Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? G, anybody, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. So I was wondering because I, I wait for your responses, especially they are yeah. online. GG. Yeah, I didn't your is not so great. I've been trying to unmute myself, but the World War One was from 1914. It's still 19, and it continued till 1918, till November. G. Anyone else? Miss, um, what Amna said is right. All right, World War One. All right, so you're saying it started in 1914, it says it here, and ended in 19, end of November. So five years from 1914 to 1919 on end of November 1918, okay? All right. So you can understand that after World War I, and which is like just the beginning of... Um, before 1920s, the World War ended. And World War I is also the time, you know, after World War I, industrialization also started in the US. So you can understand more and more women were working. And this is the time when long skirts started disappearing and women were found in mini skirts as well. So, does anyone know what's what's the date of uh, what are the dates of World War Two? Mm, miss, um, nineteen thirty nine, I believe, to nineteen forty five. Yes, nineteen forty four or forty five because 45, it will, it will take, yes, it will take. It was for five years. So in during both the wars, women became head of their families, and because men were absent, so they were taking care of um, the families, and they were responsible for providing everything to the families. So you can understand that world wars had a strong impact on creation of working women. Um, yes, I had a question. Yes, yes, tell me. So, what I'm gathering is that how are they linking women in war to the term femme fatale? No, no, they are not creating a war to fe femme fatale. I, I, was just, I just said femme fatale actually means fatal woman. Uh, yeah. Because Hollywood actually created uh, femme fatales back in 1940s. And these fatal women are actually working women. And I said K industrialization uh, was in 1920s. So after World War I and before World War II, you would find lots of working women in the real life, right? And in the industrialization's impact was that skirt size was also reduced from long skirt to mini skirt. And uh, as women started working, they were in charge of their own money, right? 
and uh, 1940s film actually if you this book actually says this is by Yvonne Tasker and the title is working girls right mm -hmm. gender yes. and gender and sexuality in popular cinema right so hollywood uh, was actually this reminds me that uh, there was this course that we did it was uh, gender and media so in that we studied women in greek societies so tab bhi jab uh, wars hoti thi when the wars used to take place uh, the spartan women used to be the one who handled their homes and their children when men used to go on war now this is the time when this which is called the beginning of the civilization so can we say that it has been happening way before the uh, the world war 1 from the very beginning whenever the men had to leave for war or for such purposes the women were left behind to take care of the stuff definitely so. definitely uh Uh, you're absolutely right because uh, the fear is about working girls. Ji, batayiye. No, miss. It slipped my mind. I'll mention it when it comes back. Sorry. Okay, that's no problem at all. So I'm saying that uh, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood actually introduced Fatal Woman in cinema in 1940s. So working women were shown as dangerous. okay working women because they were in charge of their sexuality and work and money you know so working how hollywood was showing working women started showing working women as dangerous back in 1940s and 1940s femme fatale films actually ended with their deaths okay so there is an article in this book that says uh, femme fatale the title is femme fatale we will read that article because that article discusses how uh, the images of fatal women changed over a period of time like 19, 1940s films ended with their death how the images changed in 1970s 1980s and new millennium right So, ma'am, I have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, so, what was the general reaction of women working outside for uh, their families and working for to earn and you know, how, what was the reaction of people uh, when people out there? You you are talking about people outside, right? so we are yeah. we are talking about uh, images inside in the films right how films were showing working women so as far as the question about people at large it means then that we'll have to look at research on public at large right so these are different kind of researches this this article focuses on content analysis of films it is only showing what films are showing it's discussing what films are showing and uh, for knowing what people are thinking outside we need research of people right which means uh, you may be familiar with quantitative analysis which means going out and interviewing uh, about 100 200 or 1000 people and asking them this question do you think that fit working women are dangerous or independent so even if you conduct uh, a research in pakistan you will probably find that people think that uh, educated women or working women uh, they hardly listen to their families or they hardly want to do what their families want so patriarchy actually uh, even in pakistan or in the western world uh, would want uh, different kind of reactions for women patriarchy probably would desire that we reinforce uh, as i said earlier patterns of female fascination good women and bad women so 1940s films were actually showing working women as bad women right and uh, you may have heard of basic instinct it was a popular uh, hollywood film that is one of the first films 
uh, I think it was produced at the start of 1990s that actually did not kill the working women, the working women at the end. Uh, films often show that a uh, housewife is better than working woman. So some of these films you would see K, uh, they are ending at the death of woman and wife taking over, taking control of everything. So it's it we are we will only discuss how films were showing uh, fatal woman over a period of time, uh, um, beginning nineteen forties up to the new millennium. G. Yes, I have a question. Were there any other roles of um, how women were de depicted during war in these films, or uh, besides women? Uh, all right. So. I mentioned one thing earlier. You are here from the start, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I mentioned an article. No, as in you mentioned, um, um, yes. Nini, uh, just continue. Uh, you finish. Yes, you mentioned how they had divided it into like a good role and a bad role, where the bad was usually the working woman. And the good were more the housewives, and there was a clear narrative to kill one off. But were women depicted in other ways in these movies as well? Yes, they are working and independent women because uh, basic uh, instinct uh, ended uh, with the, uh, uh, you know, like uh, if women are independent, the film offer ends uh, at, you know, like uh, the women fall in love. And when they fall in love, they are not that much fatal anymore. Oh, okay. Right? So uh, what probably it implies that independent women were considered dangerous and domesticated women were not so dangerous. So the minute a woman falls in love, she is not that dangerous. That is how they are presented in film. It does not mean that is the reality. But I'm saying that films, this is how the 40s and 70s and um, uh, 80s or 90s uh, films represented working women. And representations were changing over a period of time. In 40s, Fatal Woman film ended at their death. In 70s, there was a change in the treatment. And then in 90s, in Basic Instinct, woman did not die. She just fell in love. And as we move on, we'll find how fatal woman was treated or working woman was treated in the new millennium films, right? So all it means that uh, how films are showing, films are about writing stories. So if the author writes that this working woman uh, is uh, highly, you know, like uh, she's independent, uh, she's in charge of her sexuality, uh, she's breaking the norms and everything, so the film may end at her death, right? So in uh, in the 1940s, uh, it did end. 1940s working uh, girl films ended with their death, right? Uh, that's how femme fatale genre was created. Or uh, they were not essentially A grade films. Some of them were graded as B films in 1940s because uh, they were showing sexual content or they were thrillers of the time okay and uh, ma'am one more question um does this only pertain to hollywood or is it like a global uh, well you uh, when we read articles because this article is focusing on hollywood films okay so what uh, researchers actually do that when they read an article about western world or from some other part of the world they can they can actually conduct research on their own country like i said earlier that after reading malwe's article i thought i need to write an article on visual pleasure in pakistani cinema because i thought pakistani culture was dif different so you can probably say that it it may be global but before saying that it is global patriarchy is, is global, you'll actually need research from your own country or your own world, right? So yes. it, it means that that then you look at, uh, for example, Pakistani film, Indian film or Russian film, and you pick up uh, how Russian films are treating working girls and how Pakistani films are treating working girls. 
right? Mm. So yes. uh, in, in one of my articles um, that I've mentioned earlier, uh, uh, there was an article on representations of women. You know, it was an encyclopedia entry that I mentioned earlier. That article actually shows that in uh, uh, it, it, it has a film from 1950s. It briefly discusses the film. And it shows that uh, in Pakistani film Kismat, uh, a family was looking for a um, you know match for their son who was a doctor. So they went to a house and they met two girls in the house. One was only uh, one was doing her MA from the university, and the other had um, stopped studying after grade eight. So the elder brother tells Dr. Sahab to marry the grade eight uh, girl who was the elder sister and had stopped studying after grade eight. He said that she would be a better wife and the, the girl who was doing masters would be a wannabe. He felt that she will not be a good wife. And uh, that that's an old film from 1950s, I believe. So you can say that uh, Pakistani films were actually uh, in a way that film actually does not support the idea of education for women because uh, the, uh, the girl who was doing masters was considered a bad, bad girl. And the film actually shows her as a bad girl, right? Uh, Kismet from Pakistan was actually a super, super hit film uh, of the era and Musarrat Nazir had worked in that film. So what uh, it is not about reality, it is about what the film is showing right so the articles actually discuss how films are showing working girls or educated girls if they are showing them as good women or bad women so it depends on what story somebody has written and how the director has produced that film okay any other um ma'am i sorry did you please uh ma'am like um does the uh theater come in the in the like um, genre of media and also if so to theater ke under representations uh, differ karti thi ya waisi thi jaise cinema ke under thi see everything is here things are divided into eras right you know like how films were presenting working women in 1940s how films were pre presenting working women in 1970s so you can see that it took about 30 years to change the representation of early working girls. So in 1940s, they were shown as bad women. They were shown as in charge of their sexuality, their money. They were independent and they were not good um, housewives or they were not good for the family. Right. So after 30 years in 1970s, the images changed they are we are discussing how films were showing working women so for, from 1940s to 1970s it took about 30 years to change the image of working woman a little then in 1980s uh, the women further change so you can see after a gap uh, which is the first gap is long after 1940s the change was in 1970s but from 70s to 80s and 90s and new millennium, the change is a bit faster because you are change, you are seeing changes almost every 10 years, right? So um, you can say that it is because of the discourse or debate that is created around the images of these working women, right? So when people, uh, you can also say that feminism also increased from 1960s to end of uh, new millennium because Laura Mulvey wrote her article in 1977 and uh, you can say that in the latter half, half of the past century a lot of women were writing uh, and uh, because discourse had tremendously increased so uh, because of the discourse there were changes in um, images uh, of popular film right so it's it's about uh, your reaction and other um, reaction and great development in feminism in the latter half of the past century and beginning of new millennium that you would see change in the images otherwise media or film or theater 
being part of media uh, would continue presenting images that are uh, patriarchal or uh, images uh, that are perceived as good or bad okay so in the new millennium in the past 10 years you may have seen uh, this wave uh, especially in this part of the world uh, india in particular produced a lot of uh, tv commercials and a lot of other content that focused on changing image images of daughters or women for example ladke nahi rote if you have seen the tv commercial it says hum bachcho ko why don't we teach our sons ke ladke rulate nahi hain uh, you know because that long tv commercial ends uh, uh, as um, a boy hurting a girl or and then it then madhuri dikshit appears and says uh, why don't we teach our sons ladke rulate nahi hain bajaye iske ke ladke nahi rote Uh, that's a very uh, popular tv uh, advertisement if you write on youtube you would definitely come across that tv commercial so what i mean that actually uh, change requires movements uh, you know uh, and there was a movement uh, at the start uh, in the past decade about changing images of women or sending girls to school so india and also pakistan uh, started focusing on it india did a lot more than pakistan and produced a lot of content you may have heard that um, uh, india is producing a film uh, thappad kon bana raha who is producing uh, this uh, uh, ma'am i think it's uh, anubhav sena who made it right and so, ma'am yes. there was another one that uh, dipika padukone i think producer was called chapa which was against acid attacks right so uh, so actually which means ki images are changing right so images is change over a period of time over over 10 years 20 years 30 years so this article actually focuses on change that first occurred after 30 years then it was you know decade wise uh, you will see ke it's it's discussing how images how working women were shown in 1940s film and then first change in the in the images was in 1970s then 80s and 90s and new millennium so there is continuous uh, development in terms of representation of working women and their sexuality in films so working women were considered um, uh, immoral uh, i mean the film showed them as uh, immoral in 1940s okay it doesn't mean that was the reality but that is how the a particular story was picked up and uh, rendered for cinema but ma'am it does like define the relationship between films to society in the state because society at large had this view regarding women in general which was very fear based during the time so it translated onto a motion picture right that is very correct because cinema and society society has a, an influence on content right for example yes. uh, uh, i think many of you may have seen mere paas tum ho uh, no ma'am i avoided that like the plague <laughs> all right but i think that uh, uh, I, i taught a course to uh, i i taught gender and media uh, to students this year i think you may have been in a different group because there were two teachers teaching gender and media and in the gender and media course what i realized almost i had uh, it was a big group of students and perhaps 8 to 10 students wrote articles on mere paas tum ho so i had to find uh, that tv play and see what was happening in it and if you are familiar with the story it was the story of a pakistani working woman मतलब हमें ना जबरदस्ती दिखाई गई है ये ये ड्रामा क्योंकि इट वॉज एवरीवेयर इट वॉज ऑन सोशल मीडिया देर वर मीन्स ऑन इट एवरी अदर पोस्ट वॉज अबाउट दिस ड्रामा एवरी थिंग वॉज यू नो सर्कुलेटिंग अराउंड दिस वन प्ले एंड इट वॉज एट टाइम वेरी अनोइंग बिकॉज इवन इफ यू आर नॉट वॉचिंग इट ऑन टी वी वी वर स्टिल यू नो नोइंग वट्स गोइंग ऑन अबाउट इट Yes, exactly. So, I have done gender and media for this serial film. It was from Ima Khosa. 
पहले तो I think you weren't uh, teaching at that time this course. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I taught gender and media in fall uh, 2019. Oh, so, it was in 18. I took it in 18. All right. Um, I think this was the first time I taught gender and media to mass com students. जर्नलिज्म स्टूडेंट्स ओके सो वॉट आई वॉज सेंग दैट मेरे पास तुम हो एक्चुअली हैड अ वुमेन हु वॉज वर्किंग एंड बिकॉज शी वॉज वर्किंग द ड्रामा एक्चुअली शोज दैट शी स्टार्टेड चीटिंग अपॉन हर हजबेंड यू नो एंड शी हैड शी डिवेलप्ड अ रिलेशनशिप विद हर बॉस सो एक्चुअली ड्रामा शोड वर्किंग वुमेन एज बैड वुमेन एंड ड्रामा डिड शो that working woman was sexually independent okay so um ji so uh, ma'am i had a question ke um does the question of uh, representing a working woman uh, in a certain way come uh, jab class ki baat bhi aa jati hai for example obviously uh, taking western media side but let's say mother india is one example where she is a working woman who is the independent um uh, like a uh, household manager and all but udhar uh, aakar unko excessively glorify kiya jata hai to sort of you know meet a certain standard of um femininity or uh, or or what a woman should be so uh, do we see such representations in western media as well at that time uh there would always be exceptions there would always be exceptions when but when the um, uh, scholars pick up you know uh, certain films they are definitely find them inspiring and they are discussing how those films are representing women right so yes uh, mother india is an exception and you can say that uh, not all films represent working women that way or women who are in charge of uh, their lives uh, as bad women uh, so but what i'm saying i'm talking about popular cinema the articles are about popular film there would be definitely articles on mother india too but i'll have to find them uh, i think i can request librarian to find uh, an article on mother india if you can if anyone has written i believe somebody must have written because it was one of the, it is one of the most famous films of uh, this part of the world okay thank you ma'am okay. yes yes thank you all right uh, okay so after fem fatal we have another uh, set of readings again this is not an article i can definitely find an article uh, you've seen that most of these postings have articles but here i have uh, on this topic of misogyny and phylogeny what we have here is uh, the abstract from a number of articles right so you will see that i have posted abstracts of about 20 or more articles on misogyny and phylogeny so i am sure that you would be familiar with this term what misogyny means and what phylogeny means is everyone familiar with the term misogyny and phylogeny um, yes sir familiar yes ma'am phylogeny but could that for phylogeny the term a bit more rounded by that word by the way uh please can you repeat yourself because i think two three people were talking together yes um, could you please say the same thing can the misogyny uh, suna hua hai but not the other word i think that okay Philo- phylogeny is the opposite of misogyny so hmm. amna can you try explaining what is misogyny all right all right so misogyny is about hating women about negative images of women right or uh, misogynistic yeah. ima- images often focus I on my internet is really i don't know mai usse mute karti hu aur phir wo unmute nahi hota and i, I try to you know no problem so, at all 
असल में समटाइम्स वी हैव पीपल अराउंड अस तो दैट्स व्हाई आई से कि उसको म्यूट रखें सिग्नल भी बेहतर आता है इफ मोस्ट पीपल आर म्यूटेड कीप ऑन म्यूटिंग इट व्हेन आई स्टॉप टॉकिंग टू अनम्यूट मी और ऑल जी जी मैं आपसे पूछ रही थी कैन यू कैन यू ट्राई एक्सप्लेनिंग व्हाट इज मिसोजिनी मैम इट्स अ सर्टेन डिसलाइक ट्रेड प्रेजुडाइस अगेंस्ट वुमेन uh by the other members of the society they can be other women and they can be other men so yeah it's against the yes women. it's about hating women about negative images of women and phylogeny yeah. is about li- loving women right okay so misogyny and phylogeny are opposites is isliye humne dusra term suna nahi hai zyada tar okay <laughs> All right. So I am saying that under this heading, I have not selected one article. I have selected about twenty, twenty uh, or perhaps more abstracts of different articles. So uh, what you would see here, right? Uh, here are the articles about uh, domestic uh, portrayal of same-sex domestic violence in news media. and then there is another article uh, it says uh, coloring your prejudices from slut shaming to market nail polish to feminist activism uh, actually in colombia they have a brand uh, of nail polish that that actually has its brand name is slut Bla- brand name is domineering so uh, these different articles actually show that uh, actually discuss negative uh, images of women in different kind of media for instance this says maseglos nail polish colors are branded as uh, you know rash slutty flirtatious controlling domineering and others so the, these uh, these different abstracts focus on different kind of um, researches on misogyny and phylogeny so when we come to this article what i will do that i would um, uh, i would request all of you like i would want that each one of you selects one abstract which means it's not very long it will be maximum one page or one and a half page long and then we discuss uh, misogyny and phylogeny in classroom right so so far i have uh, mentioned uh, at least uh, two different readings where we do not have proper articles one was from the book uh, black skin white masks i said i have selected only three pages for discussion because those pages focus on a novel by mayoti capicia and the novel's title is uh, j sui martinique okay uh, mayoti capicia worked in france lived in france so it was a black woman living in france and uh, she wanted whiteness in her life this is the second uh, uh, class meeting that does not have a pro- proper article it 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 is discussing a number of different abstracts on misogyny and phylogeny okay and then it says boys and girls right so boys girls and their media experiences actually these are very short articles um, right so these 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 two short articles uh, you would find them very relevant to pakistan though these articles are from germany right and these articles focus on media experiences and uh, construction of gender identity of boys and girls these are very short articles it says here it is a three page long article so i believe k it won't and uh, these three pages would have plenty of images also can you see these images okay and there is um, another short article it says what shapes myself which means each one of us this is again a short article 5 6 pages and in these 5 6 pages you will find many pictures 
right so you can see the reading part is not six page because we have many images here um this is by nancy jennings and this is by Daphna Lemish. Both of these uh, researches are actually very long. What we see here is the summary of quite long researches. These two researches uh, were conducted by a TV channel in Germany. Uh, channel's name is um, Television. And Television wanted to see what children want themselves because uh, they felt that most of the times adults decide what to show to children and they thought they should uh, find out what children want. So they, they conducted different images to understand them better. So these articles actually, the first article says that uh, boys are brought up to be tough. Can you see this image on the left? The two boys are fighting, physically fighting with each other. And uh, the girls are brought up to be, are prepared for uh, romantic relationships. They are dreamers which is not always the case, but most of media focuses on this kind of uh, gender identities, that boys should be tough, tough and girls should be soft, okay? And this other article actually asks, um, you can see that they asked 114 children of age group 5 to 19 from seven countries. So you can say uh, this is a seven countries research and total number of respondents is 114 and their age group is 5 to 19. They are just asking these children of age groups 5 to 19 who they are, what shapes them, what is their identity. So children describe their identities and uh, describe their lives and their experiences, their relationships, uh, their desires and dreams uh, as they together form their identity or construct their identity. Okay. So I think what we can do that we uh, not essentially read this particular uh, reading towards the end of the course. Uh, we try doing it a bit sooner. Or we can do it later also, but by then, because these are simple articles and the other articles are quite uh, complicated as opposed to these two articles. So I sometimes feel that towards the end of the course, going to for a simple reading is uh, different so why not do it at the start okay so i will see where to read it i may change its date okay then here is another article that says a girl in the river are you familiar with the film mm, yes um... okay so this is Sharmin Obed Chinoy's film and apart from mujhe bacha le mujhe bacha le mujhe dard ho rahi hai right and uh, it's good that you have seen the film we we discussed this film against an article by Maslow if you can see this image Maslow created uh, this diagram and uh, he was looking at hierarchy of needs of different individuals right so instead of discussing honor killing as honor killing as such we just tried to see what were the needs of 
the protagonist this girl okay we try seeing what Saba wanted what were her needs and what were the needs of the people her father and husband who attempted to kill her okay so we are actually looking at hierarchy of needs or honor killing slightly differently uh, we are trying to see uh, you, because her father if you see that Sharmin Obed Chinoy actually interviewed both the father and the daughter because she was trying to understand what both of them wanted and why the attacker attacked the daughter and why the daughter uh, finally forgave the father for attempting to kill her. So, and then also compare it with uh, with the uh, with other honor killing cases, for mm -hmm. example, yes, was, Kandil, uh, Bloch, et cetera. Interesting question of uh, the police in the role of honor killing as well, and how they actually help them out instead of extending brutality. Right. was expected. Right. Police actually uh, works for the state, right? And police works yes. for the state, so state desires social order right so i believe there were very uh, uh, there were quite a few films in the past year that were focusing on uh, uh, police uh, how police treated uh, the couples uh, who were involved in kind of uh, relationship etc i think there were quite a few films from india i don't know sec what section 375 was focusing on was it focusing on something similar Mm, I can't recall. Okay, I wonder if that film is posted here. Yes, that film is posted here. So you can probably, uh, if I play this trailer. Film Nirdeshak. I believe you cannot hear. Uh, the audio. Can you hear the audio? No, ma'am. Mm. So, um, I think this actually focuses on... Okay. All right. So, actually, uh, you can say that media uh, keeps on presenting different kind of stories and different kind of images. So, uh, we will actually be discussing uh, this honor killing against hierarchy of needs by Maslow. Okay. So this yeah. film, uh, the next film used to be on YouTube, but I do not find it on YouTube because I believe the filmmaker Raja Amari is her name. Raja Amari is a woman's name. Okay. I believe she has removed, uh, uh, it was initially available for, um, you know, it was, the full movie was available on YouTube. She has removed full movie from YouTube. And now what we see here is only clips of the film. Uh, it does say here, yeah, there is, I, I can try playing uh, this clip. I'm not sure how long is the clip. Let's try. See, it's a, it's 10 minutes long. Okay. So this film... Ma'am, the yes. audio has been muted in the video. Then, uh, Perhaps so, that's why no, we can't hear it. Uh, no, uh, it's not because I have muted it. It's because you can't hear it on um, Hangs Out. That's why I oh. said for uh, i have unmuted it can you hear it i'm sure you can't hear it no no right? uh, you could see uh, from these clips jo ki aapko yahan pe nazar aa rahe hain na uh, different clips here that her life totally changes and uh, if you are familiar with the uh, 
different types of dances that are popular in the Arab world, for example, belly dance and any other dances. So this woman actually does not remain a normal widow after this point. She's uh, di different, but at the same time, she's trying to maintain privacy. Uh, all right. So I said, okay, if we can, uh, if, if uh, you said you can download and post it in Google Classroom, that would be very nice if, because I think it would take a bit to download it. What you can do, you can uh, upload it in Google Drive, which you would find here. It says Google okay. Drive, right? So it says Drive here. So you upload it in Drive and then everybody can watch it. So we will try discussing okay. uh, Saturn Root by Raja Amari because it focuses on lives of widows uh, in general. G. Uh, Ma'am, by when would you need the film? Uh, we will not urgently need it, but say if you can uh, download it in two, three weeks. It's okay, okay, that's, that's good enough. Okay. So mm -hmm. two, three weeks means okay, then we can post it. Then you can post it on Google Drive and share it with everyone. And uh, by, by, by the time we start discussing the film, we can uh, we have seen the film and then we can discuss what is happening in the film. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. And uh, I think we will. It perhaps won't be possible for us to see everything or discuss everything that is posted here. But this is tentative course outline, and uh, we can probably shuffle them around, seeing how we are proceeding and discussing. So there is another film by Tracy Mafe. Uh, film's title is Bedevil 1993. Mafe had posted it on YouTube. She has also removed it uh, because I think too many people were trying to access it over the past decade. Bedevil actually focuses on memory that goes down generations. And because in black cultures, um, this is not exactly the African culture, this is on Australian culture because the film is Australian and it focuses on uh, Australian Aboriginal women and uh, how they were passing their traditions, culture and stories, how they used oral tradition to pass on their cultures. So the film focuses on memory, it ha it's a trilogy and it has three short films uh, about memory of uh, uh, Australian Aboriginal people, uh, memory of the settler, uh, white settler. Okay, the first one, uh, the first of the three uh, focuses on memory of white settlers. This, uh, this first one is not on uh, women but second and third is on women so first one just provides a backdrop to what was happening in australia and how uh, australian aboriginal women uh, represent themselves uh, tracy mafe's film is one of the first film aboriginal people have produced in australia because uh, Aboriginal uh, people did not have any representation in media. They were represented as they were conceived by white people. As I said, as I mentioned, mommy's matriarchs and controlling images of black women in US. Similarly, uh, these Australian Aboriginal uh, had certain images that were created by white Australia for them. So Tracy Mafe's film actually discusses memories of uh, Aboriginal people about white Australians arrival in um, Australia. And uh, the first film is about this kid who becomes a criminal at later life. So white Australia was seeing Aboriginals as poor 
and thieves right so as we uh, move on i said second and uh, third actually this is a woman's film uh, tracy maffey is a woman who is producing the film on memories of uh, australian aboriginals so why these aboriginal children think that a white white soldier drowned in this part of brisbane you can see and his ghost lives here so the while these children are sitting on the tree here the ghost actually pulls the kid's leg right so these are uh, these three are ghost stories that tracy maffey did, depicted in the film so rick becomes criminal later in life the second is on uh, choo 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 because arrival of uh, technology in australia uh, created uh, fear among the aboriginal and the and a little girl uh, died uh, because um, she had an accident with the train so her ghost also uh, wanders in the area and the third film is on a, is a love story uh, in this one so both uh, the couple they belong to two different uh, tribes they run away they get married and then both of them die so their ghosts also live in the house that they vacated and uh, this film actually uh, focuses on memory uh, fear of uh, urbanization and fear of white settlement in australia because uh, in the last one you see that uh, that uh, developers try to develop a multi story building Uh, where the couple had died but the couple keeps haunting the place and they cannot uh, develop the area okay so i said uh, among all what we have discussed so far this is these two raja amari's sartan dude and tracy maffey's bedevil these are two women films uh, so we will try discussing uh, one or the other of the women film and try to see how women films are different from films made by men pakistan education and women actually for is a documentary film that focuses on uh, how, on how women if pakistani women are getting educated on education of pakistani women in the four provinces right and pakistan four actually is a film on four women of pakistani origin they are pakistani americans one is a master chef one is a theater artist and the other uh, and the other two are in uh, sports that are mostly meant for men right so you will find this film on youtube this is by a pakistani filmmaker who works for singapore tv okay uh, i think it may be difficult to discuss six all of these topics but we will certainly try covering most of them uh, and in the meanwhile we'll try seeing how many articles we can write during the course so please if you have any questions do ask the questions i think i have uh, mostly introduced the topics today and uh, we do not have sufficient time to start discussing an article so uh, you can ask questions if you have any um ma'am um, would you be able to tell us uh, when we'll have our midterms or approximately finals kis dauran honge like time mein uh, we will have midterm uh, in the third week from now okay okay 
uh, what I'll do that I'll quickly give you um, third week or um, uh, for final I can give you more time after the classes you know after the classes have have ended uh, you know this we have this class three times a week as we have this class three times a week you will finish this course perhaps sooner and I, you, I can give you more time for writing your final exam, which means uh, in August uh, and towards the end of August when we stop uh, having classes, I can give you a week or 10 days uh, to finish your paper and upload it. Okay? So, okay, thank you. And if you Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay. And if you finish it, how many courses are you taking? Two courses? I uh, guess, including this one. Ma'am, three, three courses. One, ma'am. Three, ma'am. Wow. Okay. okay. I think uh, two of the courses are from you and one is from Sir Karthi. All, All right. So you are taking both film theory and criticism and women in media. Yes, ma'am. Okay. How many people are taking three courses? Uh, I am. Mm -hmm. I am as well, ma'am. Okay, and uh, I did not see who was it. Amna and. Ma'am, I am also taking three courses. Come. All right. Same yeah. as I'm. So Amna has. Amna has. Uh, Amna is taking. Amna is taking two theoretical courses. Anybody else taking two theoretical courses? Ma'am, I am taking two courses. Oh, okay. I think because for uh, theoretical courses, uh, in practical courses, you will be working with your team. In theoretical courses, you will be working alone. So let's uh, let's see. I think I will not uh, give you too many assignments because we are have we are short of time. So, but try uh, uh, in the next class. I would want that for the assignments I can tell, I can briefly describe the strategy uh, that uh, for all assignments that I give, I want students to focus on uh, what you are watching on screen, right? So it means that when you do your assignments, I believe DLA and psychology students know how to use literature while doing the assignments, okay? And uh, TFT students, I, I, it only means that uh, when we discuss an article in class, it is, for example, let me open an article. So this is an article, right? Uh, I do want that you mention quotations from the article in your assignments. Quotation if it is relevant to what you are discussing. For example, if you are discussing, uh, we I have I think I have closed the link to Saturn Dude. If you were discussing Raja Mari's film or a scene from A Girl in the River, I would want you to describe the scene. Describe what Saba said or what her father said, who attempted to kill her. For example, father says. Uh, father was talking about her physiological needs that he was feeding the daughter and he had provided her safety and home he feels she should not run, she should not have run away with the boy Kassar. right so i would like you to mention the scene describe the scene and discuss what he said for example he yes, says i cannot you can't hear me no gigi you cannot hear me ma'am no i, I can hear you now okay but but uh, main aap se thi ki for doing assignments of this class it would be very important to discuss what is happening in a scene and what kind of dialogues people used for communication so I would like it that you mention the dialogue 
what father said or what the daughter said and what was happening in the scene right so for for discussions or for assignments of this class it will be very important to precisely mention what happened or precisely say what somebody said the father said kya wo bhooki thi you know uh, in a girl in the river saba runs away with kasar and marries him and father attempts to kill her subsequently right so i i am saying that if you were discussing that film you were you would say that father said he was pro, he he was taking care of her physiological needs he was providing her food and had provided her home so why did she run away so what i'm saying it would be important to mention uh, the dialogues or words people say right so i'm not talking about summary of the films or dramas because people sometimes do mention uh, summary it's important to mention summary but summary should end in 5 6 lines or 3 4 lines uh, and the dialogue or situation should be given more importance situation or a dialogue that you see in a particular scene so you can actually discuss the psychology or culture behind that particular dialogue okay um ma'am i have a question ji ji that uh, it, i think ke jab aage chal ke aap hame denge assignments tab zyada behtar samajh aayega but if you're talking about a certain thing can we also engage with other texts and other films that you know we can relate to that particular topic or are we supposed to stick to the readings you have provided us uh, you can ser- the- you can certainly uh, you can certainly use other texts because that is called literature review yeah. and it is extremely important that while discussing the films that we select you do discuss uh you use as much literature as you can for discussion or supporting your argument mm-hmm. okay and uh, if it is if it is absolutely essential then do mention other film that you can use for comparison right or uh, or for saying that both films are showing the same thing or both films are showing Uh, probably different uh, resolution to the film or you can compare uh, a dialogue from this film or a dialogue from another film so but when we are focusing on one film so i would prefer for example uh, as i mentioned earlier that students were writing a lot on mere paas tum ho so we had to discuss scenes and dialogues from mere paas tum ho right but but for supporting your argument uh, if if people were discussing for instance sexuality of uh, the protagonist in mere paas tum ho they could definitely use the text from uh, the book that we opened just now working girl by uh, ivon tasker because working girl has uh, i think uh, a number of chapters perhaps 8 to 10 chapters or more on uh, working girls so you find you can find a lot of chapters in one place or you can find uh, yeah. something on working girls somewhere else because i think a lot of people have been writing on working women um ma'am i had a question uh ke for this uh, course in some of us are psychology students so do we have to familiarize ourselves with the theory related to media in general ya is it not a necessity and agar kabhi thoda sa bata dijiye kaise hogi dekhen i would like it if you use theories that you have studied in psychology department to discuss okay 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 because if you, you. because it's uh, it's uh, things are often interdisciplinary it depends on your approach to the film if you are approaching the film from a psychological angle or if you have you know it depends on your hypothesis as well if you have a thesis statement uh, because every paper will require a thesis statement or a question that you would answer in the paper 
So it depends how you are responding. You can select any theory from anywhere because psychology and culture and communication theories do apply. Uh, it would be nice if you add uh, some of the class readings in your research papers or, or some quotations from the class readings in your paper. Uh, that would be very nice because then uh, uh, it would be easy for me to, un to understand that you are understanding what we are discussing in this class. Okay. Okay. I, I would. Uh, uh, Sorry. Uh, presentation, uh, kis tarah se like, uh, hogi ke, would we have to do it in groups or individually? Hogi? Uh, normally, to main individually hi le leti hu because what I want ke jo aap, uh, you know, you will be writing some assignments you will be doing uh, some assignments and mid and final exam so all i would want that you uh, change one of your assignments or midterm exam into a presentation for the class so as it would be your own assignment or mid exam it would be easy for you to make a powerpoint presentation of your own assignment or exam so I would like you to present your own paper and your own work to the class. OK, OK. Thank you, ma'am. OK. So uh, I, I'm not asking you to prepare uh, a new presentation. I'm asking you pre to present your own work to the class. All right. Next. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right, uh, let's mark attendance then. Uh, uh, Ma'am, also uh, for the next session, can we please switch to Zoom meetings instead of Hangouts? Because uh, some of us use uh, Hangouts on phone or perhaps there is no uh, availability of a message box. So we cannot message there on the phones. All right. So it's better. Uh, that, to Zoom. Definitely, that is why I requested that you guys create a WhatsApp group right now. So we will use Zoom meeting for next class because, as I said, we will be watching videos as well. And yes, on Hangs Out, we cannot hear when we play videos, right? So we will use uh, Hangout for. Uh, we will use Zoom for for the class on Wednesday. And after, okay. okay. So okay. let's see. Alish okay, okay, Alishba, uh, absent. Amna, Amina, present. Now. And both Amnas are present. Ariba, present. Now. Hassan Amir, Ikra. Is Ikra present? Uh, did she join at all? Uh, Kanza? Komal? Present. Kulsum? Present. Myra? Present. Uh, Mariam? Present. Nisha, was she present? Mm, let me check here. Uh, okay, let's please try seeing names of some of the students here. Uh, two unknown, two people joined without their proper names. So I don't know who to mark present. Zuha, Ariba, Zarish, Komal, Gulsom. Okay. Uh, all right, because it it will be difficult to negotiate with registrar to mark them present once i mark them absent all right so misha is not present 
uh, Nimra? Present. Omar was present. I couldn't hear him. Uh, Raja Suheb was present. I could not hear him. Shahbano? Present. Tareem? Zarish and Zoha. All right, so I have marked, all right, I have marked, I think I have uh, marked Alishba Hassan Ikra Kanza absent. And I've also marked Nisha and Tahreem absent. Uh, do you know any of these students? No, ma'am. All right. Okay, I'll try. Ma'am, I will inform Misha. She is my class fellow. I'll All right. Know. So please uh, add her in Zoom link after asking her. Right? Yeah, sure. I will. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. And uh, next classes will be held on Zoom, and I will uh, post the Zoom link in WhatsApp group. Okay. Okay, ma'am. All right. Thank you. If you have any questions, you, you can ask questions. Otherwise, I think we'll wind up today's class. Or, Thank you, ma'am. Okay. And I... Um, I do. Ji, bataiye. So, uh, ma'am, when we talk about that, how women were being portrayed from time to time and till this day, uh, but we do, when we talk about uh, books, when we engage with the literature, we see how uh, the writers, uh, you know, give us uh, an entire reflection of that time. If we read Tolstoy, we have this image of the Russian era he's talking about. Then we read George Orwell or other writers. When we watch these movies, the, when, when we talk about the Hollywood representation of women, do you think that those uh, when the the image was you know being misled or you know misrepresented do you think that there was a certain you know a criticism towards that in that time uh, when the, when they talked about the other movements were going on do you uh, was was those movements also talking about the kind of films that were being made in that time uh, mo movements also always focus on uh, films, right? For instance, when we mention uh, Laura Mulvey and uh, she started criticizing images in Hollywood films, uh, if you know about Miss, I'm sure you know about Miss World competition and Miss Universe competition. And I said Laura yeah. Melway went back to her own paper. She revisited her paper in 2008 and 2009. She published two more books on visual pleasure. So you would find that organizers of uh, Miss World competition uh, responded. You know, one of the organizers said, uh, only plain women talk like this. Okay. Right? So yeah. you can understand that uh, there were different point of views and marketing is something else. Selling uh, Miss World competition or Miss Universe competition has something else because marketing has different objectives and yeah. sco scholarship has different objectives. So what Laura Melvey was uh, doing, she was creating debate on, uh, she is one of uh, the leading feminist uh, authors, right? Mm. Uh, she is from UK, and uh, you can understand that we uh, even when she criticized uh, Hitchcock in Visual Pleasure in, and Narrative Cinema, yeah. uh, Hitchcock uh, Hitchcock did say yes. That is what I am doing. I am hooking the audience to uh, silver screen in the doc darkness of the theater. And I have to, you know, like uh, Hitchcock is a is one of the best filmmakers in the world. So film yeah. ma filmmakers have different goals from scholars. So scholars mm -hmm. are actually uh, scholarship is also a way of activism, and scholars yeah. were part of different uh, movements as well. So you can say that movements do respond. In in the next class, 
uh, I think when we discuss uh, uh, representations of women uh, in, uh, I said, yeah, right, this article here, uh, you will see that this article is actually focusing on how women were represented in Pakistani cinema over a period of time. So we would have, uh, we would discuss women like here who were decision makers. And we will also discuss uh, women like uh, uh, Shami Mara who played very traditional roles in most of the films, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we have all, uh, uh, women were represented in different ways in different cinemas and many cinemas actually focused on uh, traditional women or promoted traditional women. Um, but yes, I would also like to add, there were also certain female directors like Agnes um, Luarda, who initiated the French New Wave movement and she was considered like a feminist director because she showed her activism and her vision through her films. Right, So exactly. Uh, so uh, my question is regarding like how many of these directors and filmmakers and producers are are male versus female uh, because that also has an impact on the narrative what we were looking at i think we had at least uh, three films by women uh, you know like the devil from australia is by a woman filmmaker aboriginal woman filmmaker uh, the film on Muslim Widow is also by a uh, woman filmmaker, Raja Amari. She's from Tunisia. And Pakistan Education in Women is also a woman's film. So you can say that there are not very many women who are producing films. And uh, the pr present uh, course has uh, some films by women filmmakers and uh, is focusing on representations of uh, women from in cinemas of different parts of the world you know how women of different races or colors or uh, nationalities represented in hollywood cinema or in pakistani cinema for example orientalism discusses how oriental women are represented in hollywood cinema and uh, the article was by Yasmin Amari. Uh, that is again a woman. That's a very short article because she discusses uh, how Oriental women are represented in Hollywood film. So we either have criticism by women. I think we have perhaps three films by women, but many articles by women. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Sadaf Ahmed's article, she was teaching at LAMS on uh, representation of rape in Pakistani films, and then articles on Pakistani film, and then article, uh, Yvonne Tasker's article, you know, Femme Fatale is again uh, article by women authors. So we have many articles by women authors here. Uh, often what I can recall actually, Fanan is the only male or Edward Said is the second male that I mentioned in the readings. Many of the articles are by women. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, ma'am.